Hello everyone, and welcome back to Destiny. The big meme with this game that's been going on for months is that Destiny 2 is just Destiny 1.5. Well, not only is that not true, but in many ways, I kinda wish it was. That would imply that this is Destiny Year 4, and this game couldn't be the farthest thing from that. Destiny 2 was described as a giant reset button for the franchise, and while I'm thankful for them having the courage to hit that reset button, there are many parts of the game that suffer as a result. Destiny 2 has an incredible campaign, the economy is much more streamlined and simpler to understand, the token system, for the most part, is a vastly superior loot system, allowing you to play what you want to play and target the loot you want to earn. However, the oversimplification of the game has left me worried about Destiny 2's longevity. Content isn't the issue, I believe Destiny will deliver on the content front just fine. But tell me what is the point of playing through new content if I don't care about the loot that I can earn? In this video we're going to go over some of the Destiny 2 changes that is hurting its quality of life. Some of these suggestions you may have seen online, but some of them is what I think to be creative solutions that I would love to see implemented sooner than later. There's a lot to go over, so let's jump into it. I want to preface by clarifying that I love Destiny 2. I think it's a vastly superior game to Destiny 1 in so many ways. The game is super fun to play, is much more approachable for new players, and the stories told throughout your playthrough are beginning to seriously satiate my appetite for story and lore. All of the elements of the game are masterfully woven into an experience that will no doubt only get better and deeper over time. They have created a much more solid foundation than they ever had in Destiny 1, and I'm super excited for what it means for the future of not only Destiny 2's life cycle, but the whole series moving forward. Having said that, the game is clearly designed for the more casual audience at this point. It feels like they're doing the opposite of what they did with Destiny 1, start simple and get people in, and then slowly begin to layer on the more complex for those who end up sticking around for the long haul. Now that does imply that this video may not even be necessary since they might be fixing a lot of this over time, but as they have proven to us over the years, Bungie is very good at listening to its community, so I wanted to make sure to voice those opinions either way. Anyways, moving on to the first way the game's longevity may be hurt is through the lack of excitement for the gear you're chasing. Batter Devils is an incredible gun, probably my favorite kinetic in the game right now. However, once I have one Better Devils, I'm done. Any subsequent better devils I get is instantly trash. This is a shame because by this point, there's a good chance that most non-casual players have already found the loadout that works for them. The only interesting weapons at this point are those from the faction rallies last week or the trials and raid weapons that you don't already have. Even then, thanks to Reddit and YouTube and Twitch, you already have decided on which weapons you're going to like ahead of time. Most of this is due to the locked perk system for all of the weapons. It is a fact that there are more weapons in Destiny 2 right now than there was in Destiny's vanilla release, but it feels like there's less because they can drop with random perks. Batter Devils comes with explosive payload and that's it. Prefer it with Outlaw? Too bad. This system is obviously in place to prevent any one gun from becoming overpowered. Since Bungie can design every single gun in the game from the ground up, and therefore can balance each gun from the ground up as well. My solution to this isn't anything crazy, just make each weapon have three possible roles. That way, that's a bit more exciting when you're opening packages, and you can customize your loadout a bit more to your playstyle. Having a few different versions of the same gun would let Bungie essentially triple the number of weapons they have in the game. Either that, or actually triple the number of guns. Bungie has said that there are more weapons in the game that has yet to be released before the first expansion. Now, I think that just refers to maybe the Faction Rally weapons that we saw last week, and the Iron Banner weapons which we'll see this month, but hopefully there's more. I would like to see some more stock weapons introduced into the game, basically something to let me chase gear. The locked perks combined with how easy it is to get legendaries now, make it feel like there are less weapons than there were in any other version. And this leads into number two, which is vendors. In Destiny 2, every single vendor in the game works off of a reputation system. That means that you have to go out and do activities pertaining to the matching vendor, collect tokens, and cash in 20 of those tokens for a legendary package, which contains two items. 
I actually love this system. It allows for the ability to grind for a specific gear set. However, it does feel a little too simple due to the fact that there is only one way to get the gear you want. Yes, there are legendary engrams and random gear drops from the Nightfall and treasure map chests, but that's even more random of a selection. I think Destiny 2 needs a way for you to get specific weapons. I miss how vendors worked in Destiny 1, meeting NPCs with a selection of weapons to purchase directly instead of taking your chances with a random package. Age of Triumph started to go in a really good direction with re-rolling perks on the guns, which kept things interesting. They could meet us halfway by having certain pieces of gear available for sale each week, give us maybe one kinetic, one energy, and one power weapon from the set, plus maybe one or two pieces of armor. This could utilize the varied weapon perks from point number one to make things even more exciting. Will Shax finally be selling the Outlaw Better Devils this week? You'll be excited to find out. Also, this would make another really excellent dump for Legendary Shards or even Straight Glimmer. The third topic is Armor Perks. Armor perks are missing in Destiny 2, they're just not there. At least the unique perks like Angel of Mercy anyways. In their place is the mod system, and to its credit it's a very effective system, it's very streamlined, very approachable, and very straightforward. And you could argue that it's the ultimate in customization. It's a transmog without having to be transmog. You don't have to change armor to do something else if you can choose it in the first place. They make up with this with their new exotic armor pieces which are very specific and kind of go hand in hand to give you those extra armor perks. And for the most part, I'm okay with that. However, this sort of makes the armor sets in Destiny 2 more of a cosmetic choice. Yes, you now have the mobile, restorative, and heavy armor sets focused on agility, recovery, and resilience respectively, but that's it. For all intents and purposes, there are three sets of armor. So if you're putting together a recovery set, you just have to choose which of the recovery sets in the game looks the best to you, because that's the only difference. I think there needs to be something in the game to make armor sets more unique and more purposed. There needs to be a balance between form and function, something to really give each armor set its own identity. For example, there could be an armor piece that allows you to take less elemental damage on IO, do more kinetic damage to enemies on IO, recover faster on IO, etc, etc. Something that would make grinding out that armor set worth it, aside from just looking really cool. And the worst offender of this is Raid and Trial Set, and throughout the rest of this video, you're going to hear me make references to Bungie spending three years perfecting certain quality of life systems, only to completely abandon them and reset the progress. Raid Armor in Destiny 1 granted you perks that helped you out in the raid. All of that is missing in Destiny 2. Why don't the raid legs make you run faster while holding a charge so you can get through the gauntlet faster? Why doesn't the chest piece make you take less damage when you're in Force of Will, allowing you to survive longer in those encounters? Why don't the legs increase your movement speed while crouched so you can sneak through the Pleasure Gardens a little bit better? Strangely missed opportunities. There seems to be an element of the armor simplification that I'm just missing here. Either that or it's not complete and we should be getting more mods later on, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe with prestige mode, who knows. I'm a fan of sticking with the mod system for this, but just make them raid specific mods or something along those lines. I currently have no reason to wear the raid set, and to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the look, so I really have no reason. With Wrath, I didn't love the way it looked, but I still wore it because it provided those additional perks. Those perks made that set special. This next point is a big one, and the one I'm probably the most irritated with, and that is strikes. With one very specific exception, all of Destiny 2's strikes are awesome. In fact, they are some of the best strikes I've ever played. The shame is that you have no reason to play them. This, of course, is in reference to the loot system for strikes. For completing a strike, you are rewarded with a glorified public events chest plus five Vanguard tokens. That's it. No keys, no strike-specific loot, nothing. And in the time it took you to do one strike, you could have completed four to five public events, getting you four to five times the loot, and probably a couple of legendary engrams, which you could decrypt to probably get the Vanguard gear anyways. It boggles my mind that Bunchy has spent three years to figure out how to get you to play strikes, only to dump it all and take it back to where it was in vanilla D1. Over three years, they massively improved the reputation system and they introduced strike-specific loot, and later on perfected the system with skeleton keys to guarantee that loot. Instead, now we have no reason to play them. Every four strikes, you can trade in enough tokens to get a Vanguard package, which granted does have its own loot table, but it's nothing special and stuff you probably already have from other engrams and different quests in the game. 
At this point, I have played more Nightfalls than actual Strikes, and that's just sad. Strikes need to give you a reason to play them, maybe a guaranteed Legendary at the very least, more rewards, more tokens, something. But that's just a short-term fix. What they really need is Strike-specific gear. We also need the Skeleton Keys to come back. Keys are part of the Leviathan loot system, so it's not an abstract concept for D2. And on top of all of that, we should be able to queue into the Strikes we want to play. Maybe have them show up as banners in the world that you have to interact with, kind of like adventures. I would be okay with restricting the ones that you can select to those that are in the current Flashpoint destination. So for instance, if you wanted to farm the strike specific loot from the Inverted Spire or Exodus Crash, you have to wait until Nessus is the Flashpoint, and maybe they could have heroic versions of the strike that grant you even more loot. These are just ideas off the top of my head, so that's why it boggles my mind as to why it's so plain and simple right now. The issue with strikes is definitely a heated topic in the community right now, and I know it's a popular opinion, so hopefully some changes are coming sooner than later. Next up is the Adventure and Lost Sector system. At the end game, there really is no incentive to play through them. I'm playing through adventures right now simply because of the story and lore they provide, and while that should be enough, it's a shame that rewards don't stack up. I think Lost Sectors should at the very least be a better source for Glimmer or Mods or Sparrows, stuff that actually helps in the end game. Adventures do sort of scale with you, but they still feel a little shallow in the rewards department. Everything just sort of pales in comparison to public events. The ultimate dream would be to load into a destination and just do everything around me, but right now I just want to head over to those public events because they're the only thing that seems to be worth my time. The fix for adventures could be, again, some more exclusive gear for those adventures, maybe an awesome cloak, or even a specific gun. Here is where I think reskins could be okay with maybe different patterns or different specs. Maybe a lore tab to give you a summary of what you just did, something to kind of commemorate your time. Or at the very least, change the rare gear reward to legendary if you're level 20. That should be pretty straightforward. Patrols are just awesome in the end game. I never thought they would be, but we just need the rewards to catch up a little bit. The final topic I want to go over is secrets. There is a serious lack of secrets to discover in Destiny 2. Dead ghosts are gone, which is whatever, but there are also no time-gated quests, no alternative ends to missions, at least none that we've discovered. In The Taken King, all of those secrets were revealed within the first month or so. The Sleeper Simulant Quest, No Time to Explain, Black Spindle, all of those blew our minds. They were some of the best content deliveries in the game, and it made the whole community come together to solve them. How this is lacking in the game at the moment is beyond me. Bungie must know we love this kind of content. The game needs more passive mysteries to discover. Scannables are sort of the replacement for this, but they're super brief, just kind of like a throwaway comment, and there's no way to track completion. One of the coolest parts of Destiny was the mystery that it held, and that seems to not be there right now, which is a huge shame. So in summary, while essentially rebooting Destiny was the best thing for the franchise, I hope it doesn't take them another three years to implement the improvements that proved to be so essential in Destiny 1. I have the utmost faith in Bungie that they will start to deliver content and quality of life improvements that we're really going to appreciate, and I know this is just a starting point for them, so I am cautiously optimistic that it's only going to get better. I just wanted to voice these out and get your opinions as well on what you think on these systems. Also, be sure to leave a comment down below and share your thoughts on what you think might be some interesting fixes to these problems. Let's discuss. Anyways, before I go, I wanted to quickly remind you that in case you missed it, I did decide to extend my shirt sale for another week. You can get 30% off my channel shirt by using code FF30 at checkout. I'll leave the links down below. Also, a huge thank you to everyone who has been ordering the shirts this past week. Your support is greatly appreciated. So again, thank you. Also, be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time.